Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. Today we have another build slash review to start. It's in this box. It's another gift, for want of a better word, from Gearbest, and it's another 3D printer. I believe this one is an Ender 3. It's been around for a little while, but I wanted to look at it. The previous 3D printers I've looked at have all been fairly large format. This is a smaller format printer and on the lower cost of the range of 3D printers, but it's from Creality, so hopefully it's going to show itself to be pretty good quality and fairly easy to get up and running printing. It is a partial kit. I know there's some pieces that are already assembled, some parts are not. Before we get started, just wanted to say thank you to Gearbest for sending this to me. Um, they are not paying me for the review or anything like that. They just sent me the kit and they want me to have a look at it show it being put together and give it a fair review. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so the first thing to do is open the box up and have a look what's inside. Get it laid out on the bench and then we'll start the assembly. Looks like we did get it the right way up. Okay so looks like a quick start guide. We have a print bed, crimps, we've got a Bowden tube, a little bit of filament, and some other knickknacks in here. Uh, looks like a needle for cleaning out the tube, a sensor, so there's a few smaller parts, a little USB stick with an SD card on it. Um, Part of a bracket, probably for filament holder. Bag of nuts, bolts, cable ties, and some tools, and something in a looks like a pair of pliers. Yeah, cardboard box here, so tools. We have what's this? Oh, little spatula, plastic handle, metal frame. Sharp, flat on one side, if you can see that or not, but flat on one side and tape it on the other so you can get really close to the bed. I guess they want you to use that for uh, taking your prints off. So that's good. Uh, what else have we got? Um, 2020 extrusions, pre-drilled. Let's see if they've got rid of all the swarf out of this. One of the last previous printers I did was horribly full of swarf from the machining. Uh, mains cable correctly uh, placed for the United States and Canada. More foam, get rid of that. More foam. 2040 extrusions oh, and a lead screw. Probably the Z lead screw shoved down there for protection. It's a good idea actually. It's the bed, another piece of foam. Okay, so we have the main body of the printer. So it looks like the lower section is already assembled here. There's the bottom. So using 4040 extrusion. So this thing should be pretty darn solid. We have Adjustment screws here, which are nice and big. Uh, 220 watt heat bed, so that should get to some nice temperatures, assuming it's for the right voltage. All pre wired, got strain relief for the heat bed, which is nice. Um, custom Ender 3 movable build plate on an aluminum frame. Stepper motor and cables. Okay, let's just get that out the way. And pre attached to the hot end, looks like the fairly typical um, hot end that we get from China and the likes right now with a 0.4 nozzle. We've got a separate part cooling fan, it's only vented to one side. We'll have a closer look once we start assembling it. And we have a um, hot end cooling fan as well, so that's good that we've got the two separate fans. Let's get this out of the way for a moment. We've got more in this 
What else is in here? We've got um, graphical LCD display in a metal frame. So we have the Z axis motor. We have a power supply. This is set to 230. I'll have to change that. On off switch. It is a 24 volt, which is nice. Uh, 360 watts, so that's going to be 15 amps max. So plenty enough to drive the heat bed as well as the stepper motors and controller and everything because the rest of it outside of the heat bed doesn't take much current so it shouldn't be an issue there. Do we have anything else in here? Yes there is. Probably the Z-axis or other side plate. It's one thing I have to say that most of the packages I've got with 3D printers in them have been very well designed to contain and protect the contents quite quite well. So let me just clear this out of the way, rearrange things on the bench and we'll have a closer look. Okay, almost got everything unwrapped here. Uh, one thing I did want to check is when I'm taking these out whether there's any issues. So looking down the length of the rod it looks nice and straight. I can't detect any bends in it. I want to see if the extrusions through the machining has any holes, uh, sorry, swarf laying around. So far I'm not seeing any, nothing's been dropping out, which is good. So there's one. The holes all need seem to be um, deburred. I don't know if you can see that or not. But they're all quite nice and neat, which is good. All threaded. That's a 2040, and we have another one here. So absolutely zero swarf. That's just a protector from the lead screw. That's one, and then we've got the two 2020s. Again, no shavings or metal shavings or anything falling out of these, which is good. So as you can see, most of this kit is already assembled. We've just got to do the vertical aspects. Now the one thing I did notice, so these are all good, so we'll get started with assembly in a moment, is this main frame has a bit of a wobble on it. That probably means that it's gotten a knock or something in transit possibly and um, we just need to straighten it. But there's just two screws on either side of the frame because I know this bench is flat so I've got a great big flat piece of um, MDF on here. So if we just slacken these screws on the end and on the other side we'll be able to set it down flat and we'll just go from there. Um, I've, actually, I'm going to do that right away. Um, I won't count that as part of assembly time. The assembly instructions come on a single sheet of paper. So this is the only instructions that are here for assembly. It says for, you know, end of 3D printer instructions for assembly. So we will try and follow just these instructions and see if it is enough to get us up and running. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. See how long it takes before we have to go to the web and look at something else. So we have a nice set of tools, full set of Allen keys, um, a couple of smaller wrenches. The wrenches aren't the best quality, but then it's just for a quick assembly. Um, if you have your own tools, then that might be nicer and more comfortable. The Allen wrenches look reasonable. Um, and you get you know, a complete set, so I'm assuming there's all sorts of different size screws here. Uh, each bag with the screws is clearly marked with what's in there. So following the instructions and matching it up to the bag for the screws should be an, a breeze. The pulley for the, I'm assuming the X-axis is already um, 
crimped on the end with these brass furrows. So they're probably going to clip in and it's probably going to be the motor that's used to tension it. We'll find that out shortly. Um, we've got some covers for some of the 2020 profiles, presumably for the top. Um, some couplings for the PTFE tube and a spare nozzle, which I'm assuming is also 0.4 millimeter. And that's pretty much everything. It looks like we've got the complete kit here. Um, actually, the fittings for what is the other end of this? Oh, there. Yeah, so you need the fitting for that end, but they've got two of them. The one on the um, hot end is already assembled. The hot end here, so we can zoom in a little bit. So as you can see, part cooling. Um, this looks almost exactly the same hot end as my HC Maker has um, in its profile, flat, two screws holding it into the back plate and everything. Same as the Tronxy X5S. In fact, looking at the head, it has almost exact same um, configuration as well. So that seems to be a fairly common part. Now obviously Tronxy is a different manufacturer to Creality. Um, Creality do seem to be using some nice parts here. Everything seems to be well fastened. Nothing seems to be loose. Um, as I said, the only issue I've seen so far is the fact that this is not flat and I think that's going to be easy to assemble. The main carriage is um, already assembled. So what you don't have to do with this kit is start messing around with um, V-groove wheels and stuff like that. They, we do have an eccentric on here too for tightening it up, which is nice. See if that will focus on that. Um, so that's a nice touch. I think that I haven't had any other printers with that on so far, uh, except when I did the upgrade on the uh, Tronxy X5S and I added those myself. All right, so I'm just going to clear a bit of space out. It's according to this, I'm just going to check the list of parts. And if we are all good, then we will get going. I'll be right back as soon as I've checked the parts list. Okay, so I've just gone through the list of parts that we have here. This side is perfectly correct. This side is all correct as well. Except that for all of these nuts and bolts and washers, we actually have more than what is here. So they've given us either spares or they've got extra bits we need to assemble that are not included, uh, which is nice. It's always good to have spares. Um, so the next step now is to see how long it will take to assemble this. There's our clock and we'll start it now. Okay, I'm going to try and do this all in one take and I'll probably just speed things up and where necessary I will mention things. So, first thing we need are the two vertical sections. Uh, we will just flatten this base too while we're at it. One. Two, three, four. I've actually got six in here. So I need four of these spring washers, I'm assuming, as well. Yep. And the two spares we'll put back in the bag. Alright, put those at the back. Let's find an Allen wrench that fits. These side pieces just so we can level it off. Oh, that's already done. It looks like it was just this one piece here. But we'll do both sides anyway just to be sure. Snip those up. It's actually nice to be seeing a, such a small printer being made with such um, heavy, large sized extrusions using these 4040s. 
even the one that I'm going to custom build myself is only using 3030 extrusion so far and that's bigger than this it's going to be a um, Core XY and I'm using 3030s and 2020s this is using 4040s for the base so excellent okay that's those tight and now there's no wobble at all so let's get to assembly I guess I did include that in the assembly time <laughs> so step one putting in these verticals come okay, on so if you look carefully at the drawings on the instructions you will actually be able to identify which piece of extrusion you need based on the hull patterns and which orientation they go so just make sure you have a close look at that uh, in the meantime I will keep chugging along with faster speed and just pop in with comments when you need them Okay, there's the, that's step one. Step two is mounting the display and the power supply. So the power supply is going to mount on the back of the case. Let's just set the uh, power to 110 while I remember so I don't Actually, it probably won't damage anything getting it the wrong way around. It just won't work very well. Anyway, this is going to go in here. Has it down this way, but oh, maybe it's going to sit off a little bit. Yeah, it does. It sits up a little bit off the. It sits up a little bit off the bottom. Before I put that up, I just want to show you the bottom of the printer. So what we have is all of these cables from the controller um, coming out so that you've got the big power connection which goes to the power supply 24 volts and then a bunch of smaller cables for um, steppers and temperature sensors and stuff like that and then we've got one ribbon here which is going to go to the display so as I said next thing get this power supply on so that's going to go here this is going to be attached with two M5 by eights supply nice and secure the display as I said is going to literally just mount right there not sure whether it shows the ribbon cable going in there yet uh, no it doesn't so let's just screw that in Right, display, so step two is now done, power supply and display connected. Step three, we're going to put the limit switch on here. So, here's our little limit switch pack, it's already got the screws in it. And, key there is indicated in the diagram, is to make sure that it is locating properly in the keyways now yeah. 
Get those plugs in there. Yeah, I know. I'm not reading for that one. Okay. So that's step three. Step four is putting in the Z motor. Z, 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 Z. That is going to go right here. Rotate really that round a bit. That's going to go right here. It's got two holes here. We need M4 by says 18. Oh, there we go. They're hidden. Hidden under my remote. We do have them. I knew I must have counted correctly because I thought we had everything. Looks pretty good. Please to try and get these things as accurate as possible as you go. So that's step four done. So that's end of page one. We're on to page two. Yay. So next step assembling the gantry by the look of it. So again we've got two extrusions. One is going to be shorter than the other one, so one, two, three, four, five, six holes in it. So that will be this one, which is the longer one. That's the one I want. So we're following this instruction, this one, and then this one. So I need two M4 by 16s. And give away is the fact that we have the brass piece for that. So that ultimately is going to sit here. We have our six hole extrusion. Ah, there is only one way it will go. So on here we've got two mounting holes and we've got this screw which is actually there's a recess for it. This one is further away, different positioning. So that's the screw hole we need that just nestles over there and we have the two holes that are going to go through here to secure it. So that's what we need to do. So let's get one in. on and the left hand plate on. So gantry which is sorry the head carriage which is this one so this is going to go that way so the head carriage has to go like this and we'll just slide in there it's nice it's already pre-adjusted by the feel of it
so far relatively easy certainly within the realms of any um, let's just say novice kit builder One of my concerns that I have right now is that the, these two beams are being pulled in, which might indicate that center that center is a bit crooked, perhaps. I don't know if I can measure the distance between these. So at the top it is, excuse my head getting in the way here, 255, yeah, 255 millimeters across the top and across the bottom it is 200 and, ooh, 250. That definitely means that this is splaying itself. This is definitely splaying itself out because it's 250 at the bottom and it's 255 at the top. So for whatever reason, whatever reason, this is splaying out over. Now, if possible, I can fix that. Well, that will definitely get fixed when this gets screwed on the top, and you can actually see the difference there. That will pull it in. What we'll do is once we assemble it, we'll we'll slacken these bottom ones off and relieve any stresses. So be aware of that. Um, looks like there's a few little alignment issues. I think major. And hopefully, once that's in and done, it will be having little effect. So next step is putting the pulley on this gantry assembly. Simple little belt. So we go around the back of here, we're going to be putting another pulley piece on here. And what we're going to do is attach to these two little slots. So they're going to go underneath and just literally pull up. This one is going to come over the top and that's going to go in here and do the same. And that's all there is for that attachment. Now we need to put the pulley on I'm sure next. Let's just put that back down. So we've just done this assembly here. So now we're going to add this item right here, which is just this little pulley tensioner. So 
tighten the first one up first, which is now done. That's pretty, well, it's not exceptionally tight, but it should work. And we'll tighten up the second one. Let's see if I can make that a little tighter. Just use the Allen wrench to lever it a little bit. Sounds like something is... Uh -huh. So, I guess you need to make sure this is at an angle now and it's rubbing on the edge of this bearing. So we need to just pull those out a little bit so that they're in line. There we go. That shouldn't make... No silly noises are now. That runs quite nice and smooth, which is good. So we've now done step eight, which is putting on the belt tensioner and tightening it. So step nine is dropping it down onto the gantry. onto the two verticals. It says do not tighten don't tighten if too tight. That would be this little lead screw thing here that we're talking about. Now we need to do need to put back in our lead screw because we took that out so we could check fittings before. So let's just put that back in and tighten it up. That's on. Now we know that the bottom is slightly narrower, so we know that this is going to tighten things up when we put it on. In fact, that's already pulled it into place, but we probably want to give it a little bit of an extra tighten. So, next thing, anyway, that was step 9. That's all on. Step 10 is to put the vertical piece on, which is for M5 by 25s with their spacers. Uh, sorry, nut and washers, and two end caps. Okay, what I am going to do, because I happen to have some, is I'm going to put a clamp across here and just tighten them in a bit. So what we can do is put this on here and just gently put some tension on here. I'm just going to slacken these screws a little bit while we do this. Alright, that way I can get everything lined up. Now if I take the ruler and we just do a measurement again, we'll just check at the bottom. So here we've got to just line it up is literally 250 almost exactly. So, I want this to be 250 as well. Alright, so I'm just going to get my head in the way while I just do this. And actually, where I'm holding that right now, that is actually holding it at 250. So, we'll just tighten these up. And 
that's that done. Now we can lose the clamp. And move on. So we've done step 10, except for the end caps, the end caps. Okay, step 10, step 11, assembling the, ah, oh, I must be getting near the end because they want us to assemble. The spool holder. Here we go. So that's that done. And for a change, it actually shows how to connect up all of the various electronic components. So we've got cables which will have numbers on, and we have components that will have numbers on. Or at least they show the position of them anyway. So let's get those done. First one around the back here would be the power underneath. So that's that one connected. We have two, three connections coming up here. Um, here is the Z axis stepper motor. So that goes on the bottom, this bottom stepper motor. So we drop that one in. This longer ribbon cable is going to go to these two steppers and there must be a yes, that sensor. So we've got this one which is marked E for extruder, so that goes to the extruder right here. We have X for here, that's in there, and we have the limit switch which is going to have a connector somewhere, probably buried in there, yep, it's buried in there, so we'll drop that in the hole, a little harder to get to, but not difficult, and that's in, just make sure it's not going to rub on the um, gear that's connected to the stepper motor in there. That's that. You probably really want to cable tie this somehow to stop it from flopping around in the breeze which is what's... I guess that's one of the negatives of this. Now we've got this cable which needs to go to the extruder. I think, oh, ribbon cable for the... So we do need to put a fitting onto the extruder and put in the PTFD tubing. So we've got two fittings and a spare nozzle, which is nice. I guess they assumed initially that it was not assembled, and according to these instructions, the hot end wasn't assembled. So we just need one of the fittings. And this will go in this hole right on this side. It's already threaded. And we have one of these little wrenches. Not sure which one will fit, but one of them will. I haven't used this so, so far with all of this. We've only used one wrench. So now this will just let's have a look how best to try and run this. That's going to go under there, I think. Just push that in there, and that's that. So let's see. And that done. Now we haven't tightened up this bed yet. 
So we will have a look at that before we do anything. Um, display tells me to put it into EXP3. EXP1, EXP2, EXP3 is the one nearest the bed, so that's okay. It's written on the bottom. So I just plug that in there. Make sure it's out of the way. Now I do want to just check two things. One, I want to pull to an SD card slot, USB slot, rubber feet. No, I'm going to leave the controller alone for the moment. Looking inside, everything looks to be connected okay. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's try and zoom that in and show you. So here we have these wheels. They're they're tight, but there's some eccentric nuts here that can be adjusted which will take out the slack of these. So I'm hoping it's that one. See that's just the tiniest amount of movement and it's tightened them in. Now there's no play at all, which is excellent. Just Tighten that up a little bit, just so they don't. They were a tad loose. Well, they probably did that deliberately so that there's no damage in shipping. Just tweak that. You want it so that they're tight enough so that when you try and move them with your finger, they present a fair bit of resistance, but not so much you can't turn them. So that it's taking up the slack, but you're not deforming the wheels. There. All right, so that's good. So, theoretically, we're done, except for bed leveling. Oh, and that entire process from start to finish was one hour and one minute. So allowing for my phone call and chit chat, you can assemble this thing in under an hour.